What is going on everyone? My name's Boyt and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology, the Titans action spawning in the left side of the map in the red color playing as Gaia. His name is Shadowfax. His opponent today in the blue color playing as Oranos. His name is Chemo. This is the main bracket of the competitive mega random 2022 uh the debut tournament here one thousand dollar prize pool we've had the group stages we're into the main event right now and things are gonna get pretty exciting pretty heated we've already got chemo sending out a villager into the middle of nowhere i'm not sure exactly what he's searching for with this citizen but he is he is searching nonetheless uh, so we'll see what he's going to find there. Getting a little bit of extra early game scouting information here as he does spot some Auroch out in the middle of the map here. He'll be jumping onto his Savannah tree and then seeing what to do from there. So a little bit of a weird start here from Chemo, but these players both making it through their group stages. I believe Shadowfax placed first in his group and Chemo placed second in his group. Uh surprising uh surprisingly but that's just how the cookie crumbles when it comes down to it but we do have a pretty exciting matchup for you today uh to kick things off here shadowfax opting to go with gyre in game one a super weird uh ballsy pick here for shadowfax showing that he believes that gyre is a lot stronger than uh a lot of players uh, tend to think and I, I agree with Shadowfax in a really big way. And what I think was going through Shadowfax's mind here is that he expected Chemo to pick the Ra in game number one. But Chemo's gone with the Aranos in game number one instead. So maybe catching him off uh, a little bit off guard. I do think that of every single god uh, in the game, Aranos is going to have... Uh, at least a very good time against Guy. Thank you so much for the Prime Kmart. Appreciate you, my friend. Uh, so, yes. Chemo picking Aranus, getting what I would say to be, what I would say is the stronger end of, or the better end of the stick here in this matchup. Uh, so we'll see how Chemo is going to navigate it and, and what he's going to be able to do to take Shadow Facts out here. As Shadowfax now eating his rhinoceros over here. And continuing along in this game. Is he getting any uh, any economic upgrades is a big question. Big answer is yes. He's already got hand axe. He's already got pickaxe. Pulling off the off the wood now. Going to be getting himself a little bit of extra food to try and advance to the classical age for a 430. Going to be fairly clean in this, in this uh, early game stage here. Uh, you'll definitely be able to get that... Uh, that 400 food in time so kudos to shadow facts here as uh we check out what chemo is doing getting up his temple he'll be advancing at the same time as well so the reason why i say that Uranus has got a lot of advantage in this matchup is for a couple of reasons and they might be a little bit more hidden than you might think so reason number one is uh, Aranus has got access to 5.5 speed Terma, which is maybe one of the more obvious advantages for Aranus. So 5.5 speed means the Terma can dodge arrows. So you can move in, uh, dodge your opponent's first volley, pick off a Terma, run away, etc., etc., and get an advantage that way. Reason number two is actually something a little bit more subtle, and that's that Aranus has got access to Helios. And what Helios does is it effectively counters Tartarian Gate, which is a big, big ticket, uh, up, uh, big, big ticket way in which a guy player might try and win the matchup. And then utilizing Helios going forward, you can use that to take out a town center or something like that. However, however, guy wins the late game hard. So if the Uranus doesn't destroy the Gaia, which can be tough, the Gaia player will be able to find some sort of a victory in that a late game stage. And we do have an incredibly defensive map here as we take open uh, the, the fog of war here as the cliffs on this location are here. And so there can be some walls that go through uh, both sides over here as well. So 
That is a big thing here for Shattered Max. So you see the military barracks getting thrown up. We see the counter barracks getting throw out, thrown up as the automaton are coming out as well. Uh, so we've already got a very, very nice defensive home gold mine now for for Shadow Faxes over here on this location here. What's Chemo going for in his main base? He's going for Mermillo, he's going for Terma. We'll be seeing this Oracle here getting taken out as well. As Chemo is just getting started here, it would seem. Uh, now, the big thing here for Shadow Fax is you do want to be chucking these spider layers down as early as you possibly can. A bit of a weird place to put them right here. Yes, this is going to be an entrance for, uh, for Chemo, but I would have thought that uh, I mean, maybe a little bit too far forward and they could get built over. So it's going to be uh, somewhat important where that's concerned here. As we do see uh, Shadowfax has got good units out. 38, 40 population. Kimo's at 44 population. So a little bit of an advantage. He does have the heroes as he's going to be pushing in. Uh, we will be seeing Shadowfax saying, nope, not just yet. Get out of here. No problems. Kimo has to pull back. And he's going to continue his production here as he has to figure out a way forward. And it looks like Kimo has spotted that he's, this is the sort of map that he's going to have to be dealing with right now. Uh, the defensive orientated map. So he's going to have to figure out kind of a different way. Normally you want to be fairly active with your okay. units against, uh, against Gaia, but sometimes that can be a little bit tricky if the maps uh, get kind of congested in the middle. Though while there is a, not much space in the middle, that can get walled off right now it's open and if you can get past that then you can come and really get some good damage onto your opponent as we are seeing a whole bunch of uh villagers now making their way over onto the gold tier as shadowfax is trying to spend all of his favor currently on automatons in order to try and defend himself which uh, seems to be a decent idea but if you can catch them out you can get some really really good damage done as another automaton is going to be popping out here for Shadow Fact. 69 population. Kimo is at 69 population himself. He'll be getting another Valor in 40 seconds. Coming down, he's just scouting around, trying to see what uh, is in his opponent's base. He will be moving in, trying to hit this location. Shadow Fact will be also getting himself another Spider Lair fairly soon. Uh, but these villagers right now are going to be fairly easily defended here. It would seem, oh, those Terma for Kimo just all missing his opponents there. So you see a, a cheeky guy of Forest on this location and, and Kimo is just darting around, utilizing his speed here to not, not be in too difficult of a position. As we see Kimo falling back. And that's that here. Is now... I mean, the Mermillo can jump over onto these, uh, onto these, or well, he's kind of want to try and bring the units through that, through that Boarding. spider layer, but it hasn't yet happened. Kimo right now throwing down another Valor here. He gets some of those Terma yet again. Gets a, gets another Mermillo. I do. I am more partial to getting Hero Mermillo in this matchup. Definitely allows you to raid a little bit easier, but. Kimo's just taking his time. There is, it is a very, very tough one to really make any serious amounts of damage done as we do see that the units here for Kimo are pushing forward. We have a handful of Terma here for, for Shadow Fax and it's just, Kimo's just saying, yeah, you don't really have anything here. So he's gonna be doing that. Do we see, oh no, there's Oracle here. I thought, do we see early, um, early signal flies here from Shadow Fax? You should just scout that out, but obviously not. As if we come in and we take a look at these upgrades here for Shadowfax, he's still sitting on those baseline upgrades. Kimo, on the other hand, let's see what he's got. He's also got those baseline upgrades, and we are seeing a town center coming through as uh, Kimo's units running straight over those spider layers there, only uh, getting hit by one, but Kimo getting himself a town center as well over on this location. Shadowfax getting his own town center, and this game is going to be... Uh, getting fairly boomy here as we do see that those spider layers pick off two units there as well. As Kimo is navigating around this fairly, fairly nice. Yeah, he has to sacrifice a couple of units for the for the spider layers, but he hasn't lost any heroes yet, uh, so he's kind of in a in a decent position where that's uh, where that's coming. As we see some counter barracks getting dropped here, we've got ourselves some Caraballas are getting built. Town center is up. For Kimo, so both these players, are, are, 
to be honest, if we have this much hunt, I wouldn't, if I was the Uranus, I wouldn't be looking to get a second town center. I would have looked to try and get Heroic Age, try and get, uh, try and get Mythic Age here. Himo's units are getting slightly killed here as he's pushing through his opponent's base. And Shadowfax will have an edge economically because of the, the Gaia Forest trees that he can chop down. And also those cheaper upgrades he can get, as well as the faster villages if he can get channels as well. So we do see Kimo attempting to move in here. These spider layers are taking some units down as the Mamillo trying to push forward. And now Shadowfax... Pushing back through here as the Karabalots are going to be retreating back. And Shadowfax, full population. Chemo, full population himself. Lots of resources in the bank, though, for Shadowfax. As he's going to want to try and get uh, to the next age as fast as he possibly can. But he gets that town center up. Can start making more villages out of this town center as well. He could probably consider stopping production. Because he's full, full units and just wants to be getting villages at this point. Uh, Kimo as well could consider doing exactly the same thing as uh, both players not really able to get in and get the damage done that they might like but plays also with those Cairo Baluster out and that really stunts the progress that can be made here and we do have a shockwave here in this uh, for this fight a big shockwave getting thrown down as Kimo is trying to push through and he's got the heroes out as well to take down these automatons and it's really really important for Kimo to pick off every one of these automatons in this fight if he wants to come out of this with any sort of an advantage here as we see those units falling Kimo still at nearly full population here there is still a handful of those automatons alive here uh, and they can prepare everything back up if they stay alive at the end of this fight there's one remaining here as Kimo is going to have to retreat away and this is huge for Shadowfax he's going to be able to repair these automatons back up if he so chooses and have a huge advantage in terms of myth units Whereas Kimo's lost a lot of his myth units thus far, but it does look like Shadowfax is not going for that. And uh, we see one automaton in the back uh, repairing back up another automaton. So we'll see how fast he's going to get these up as they are slowly uh, coming close to close to being uh, decayed. If you just tap them, though, they get the, their lives back as these ones are both getting close to disappearing as Shadowfax is not paying attention there. One going down, another one going to be going down here as well. It would seem as we, we have to repair them. Like he's not doing it, but okay, no problems there. Chemo now probably going to be looking to get his third town center. I would assume it's fairly standard chemo, chemo play here. He's eating the elephant at the top side of the map. He's got berries over here and a hyena to boot. And Chemo going to be doing chemo things through this game as shadow facts look at the upgrades Easy. still no plow but i imagine he's getting it and he'll be able to get irrigation behind that get flood control or just decide to go heroic age as his gold mine does expire over here we do have gold on both uh, situations over here with the spider layer on this one to defend it so we'll see uh We'll see Shadowfax probably mining that gold a little bit if he needs to, but Thea coming through now as Chemo pushing back in. Still no Heroic Age for Chemo. So Shadowfax in a fairly advantageous position right now, uh, hitting the Heroic Age first in this matchup. And Chemo's just not able to really get in and do what he wants with his army. And while this is partly due to the map being so so narrow, this is also just partly due to Shadowfax having good line of sight around everything here. Uh, and and defending nicely and he knows that he doesn't need to leave his base and he's happy to sit here and just try and get to the late game uh and we've talked about it briefly but uh the the reason why i said chemo should probably stay one town center here is so he can get to the mythic age first because if shadow facts gets to the mythic age first that means that the tartarian gate is going to be really really tough to deal with here as chemo is pulling back and he is going to be advancing through Thea himself. So no uh, kind of aggressive Hyperion here. There is a villager going to be making its way over to this town center to build that one up. Shadowfax getting his own town center onto this location. Uh, we see ourselves up to quarry already for Shadowfax, getting himself channels as well. Very delayed channels there. That's one of the upgrades we see Gaia mains getting super early as now Shadowfax is going to be moving forward here with his 
army I'm getting a little bit aggressive but these villages here are oh, beautiful economic guild getting thrown down but it's not quite enough to path block that and this is going to be good for chemo he's going to get two villager kills as he manages to surround those as they're trying to get this town center up nice play there we see this stallion bird spotting this citizen over here but we do have already one hero terma two citizen kills there for chemo He's got to be happy about that one. Searching for some more over here. Shadowfax, though, going to be able to advance to the Mythic Age here. Does he have a market anywhere? I don't see the mark. There's the market. So Mythic Age on the way, and it is going to be Hecate. So the big reason why... Well, there's another big reason here for for um, Aranus that he's going to have a want to go Helios is that he can't cast Tartarian Gate where he wants. He, there is a decent spot here for it, though. But he can't cast it on the Gaia Lush. So if the... Uh, Gaia player spreads the lush well enough as we do see the citizen getting out of position here yet again and Kimo just goes directly for it picking off a third citizen in this game absolutely huge here for uh, for Kimo as he picks that citizen off gets away this town center still going up for Kimo and kimo has got lots of resources in the bank himself. He's got his market over here. He's searching around with these Ooh. citizen for whatever's up here. There is a gold mine over here that uh, Kimo is going to want uh, potentially as this game goes on. He sees the gold mine. He sees the, the lion here as well. But the village just happily going on to the wood layer. And we are seeing Hecate here. So I'm surprised to see Hecate from Chemo, but maybe he spots a location and maybe he spotted this location that he can cast the Tartarian Gate in and feels like that's going to be the most value for him. But had he gone, had he not gone Hecate here and he went uh, Helios, maybe has enough time to get to the, uh, to the Mythic Age and Vortex onto that Tartarian Gate and put a stop to it. Uh, but... That's just the way it is, and we'll see if, if Shadowfax is going to recognize this weakness in his position and build some buildings over there or not. Uh, there is another location where you, where Kimu can put the Tartarian Gate right here, close enough to this town center, close enough to these villages over here, getting a little bit of value where that's concerned, or alternatively here as well. Could be a spot as now uh, Shadowfax is going to be moving forward into Kimo's base to try and throw his own Tartarian Gate down. He has got no line of sight on his opponent, so a little bit behind the eight ball here. Definitely wants to be throwing that uh, down as fast as he possibly can as more units are getting taken down as Kimo is searching for some units to pick off. We do have a low HP citizen, so another citizen kill here for Kimo as this game is going on. Shadowfax here. Not being very careful with his with his building placement at all, but the uh, the spider is coming in clutch here to pick up a whole bunch of Mermillo for this trade. One citizen for like five Mermillos or something like that. So uh, Shadowfax is going to be happy about that one as he drops the Tartarian Gate down in the front here of Chemo. Uh, and now if we look at what Chemo is going to do, just about to advance. Uh, do we have any palace up anywhere? We do have one palace coming down now over on this location. Again, send those Stymphalian birds over here to take this Tartarian Gate. One of the uh, little known uh, weaknesses of Tartarian Gate is the Stymphalian birds because the Tartarian Gate's only got 60% pierce armor as opposed to a as a regular building which has got 95% pierce armor. So this Tartarian Gate actually does go down to a handful of Stymphalian birds here as Shadowfax is kind of well defended. I don't see any units that have really come through here for for Kimo to drop that Tartarian Gate anywhere. And now we've got the Llama Caravan coming through. They've got themselves channels. Shadowfax can get himself coinage and those are going to be some zoomy Llama Caravans. Shadowfax playing this super boomy here in this game as he's going to be moving forward into Kimo's position. Both players doing a, a, a very, very defensive job here as we do see the Lampede coming in. Nice play there from Shadowfax hitting his opposing player's Lampede there before, uh, the, before anything else can happen. Some beautiful play there actually from Shadowfax getting himself a big advantage here going forward. Uh, the Tartarian Gate is about to be finished off here. And now we see uh, Kimo just going to be hanging tight here in his base. Not yet moving out, not trying to be just playing super defensively. This is kind of in a way Kimo's style. Lots of resources in the bank here. We still haven't seen him using his Tartar Engage. He's going to try and, I, I would assume, use it in tandem with an attack elsewhere. You do see uh, Mamillo searching around, maybe, okay. Right here is, is a spot, so it's going to be hitting this fortified town center, but 
Imagine Shadowfax can just come over there and take this out with this army. How Shadowfax's population looking? He has himself a fire siphon over here. He's got himself a couple of hero destroyers to wander in onto that location as well. You can just bring everything else in. So Kimo's going to have a little bit of time now after destroying that Tartarian gate to get himself sorted. Gold mine situation over here. We do have good gold here, good gold here. And we've got a farm in this top corner for Kimo as he is going to be able to put a juicy, efficient market here in this corner and uh, start trading to this town center effectively. But again, Shadowfax, he knows his game plan is to get set up economically, get all of his upgrades. If we take a look at this, we are starting to see some upgrades through for Chemo, some upgrades through for Shadowfax as well, uh, as we've got just a handful of Llama Caravans that are out thus far. Bit of a shockwave coming through now. As the uh, Tartarian Gate going to be getting taken down. So long as the Tartarian spawns don't attack the Fire Siphon too much here, this should be enough to kill off this Tartarian Gate. And that just means that both players are kind of getting no value out of their Mythic Age God Plower power in this game. And we just kind of go into the next stage of the game and see how what they're going to choose to do here. We see some Stymphalian Birds getting taken out. The Tartarian spawns are going to be dealing with these destroyers as the uh, Tartarian gate lives with a little bit of HP here. We've got ourselves architects as well, so it's actually a really, really strong Tartarian gate. The question is, will these Tartarian spawns be, be smart enough to start attacking a town center or will they go the wrong way? It's now chemo. Just hanging out with his with his units, Ooh, doing his. Well, Shadowfax just look, hanging out with his units, doing his uh his darnest. Kimo not really putting up too much here. He's getting himself a market in that corner now, but no palace on this front could lead to a little bit of a disaster for him. As we are seeing this citizen checking out the top corner of the map, he sees Ankh of Ra. That's actually a bit of a big deal for the Atlantean mirror right? because it allows you to get an extra two point four favor over your opponent. A second, a, min a minute. We see some more units falling as Kimo trying to push through with his medium destroyers here. As the Fire Siphon rolling forward as well. Shadowfax still full population. He's got only six villagers on the food though. Sorry, yeah, on the food though, which means he's basically just going full, uh, full uh, wood-based army here, which seems a little bit peculiar. I feel like you can get a lot more done with... The food units here is getting a couple of heavy destroyers in on this position. He's just going to be throwing down some more palace here. Uh, you do have to remember that Gaia buildings also regenerate on top of get repaired. So they get a little bit of extra HP to go up as well. So it can be really tough to push through as Kimo's army looking mightily strong on this position. But he does need, he does need to kind of do something to get in on this spot and surround his opponent otherwise we're going to see a bit of a, a spam war here for a very long time it might seem because if if there's this one hole to fight through like you, how do you get over to your opponent's base neither player have got vortex neither player have got a rock kimo does have uh sky passages but I mean, he has to get through here. As, I mean, Shadowfax has got this mostly scouted out. Some walls coming down here for Shadowfax can put an end to any of that kind of thing as well. As these units doing their best job defending here. Both players kind of low on resources, I would assume. As we do have bronze shields now through for, uh, for Shadowfax and Kimo falling a little bit behind on those upgrades. He yeah, started his trade route making llama caravans from both locations here. And this is a weird position to be in because Kimo, he's not going to be able to... He's not going to be able to make any ground here matching the uh, composition the guy plays. Gonna make. And there's just, there's just no way you make any real ground here. So you have to figure out like a different way to break through. We are seeing fire siphons being used, so that's going to be slightly different and there's really not that many destroyers being made here for Shadowfax. Shadowfax is going to start making some fanatic here as well. He's got a whole bunch of units uh, in the back here. Uh, one thing that you should be kind of aware of 
work. Because if you're going for these Arcus balls, you only really need to have a handful of them. And once you have them, you should stop making them so that you can fill the rest of your army up with food-based units. Because the Toxodes or the, the Archers, the uh, Arcus here, do not get do not get taken out, so they just get, when you lose a destroyer, it gets replaced by an Arcus, and then you end up having a 24, uh, like a 30 popular, a 30 arm, unit army of just Arcus, and you can't do anything with it. Okay, we're now coming around the back with his Stymphalian bird. Not sure exactly what the plan is here. Maybe you can sit on the trade route, get a couple of hits onto those speedy llama caravans. Can this even hit that? I'm not even sure that this Stimphalian bird can hit llama caravans, actually. Really, right now, it's all about building spam. Get more pallets down or, or get a tight now. Those are the two options. We see Champion Arcus through for the Shadow Fags as he's starting to pull ahead slightly in the economy, able to afford this stuff. You see this Stymphalian bird flying overhead. Gonna take down. He does manage to hit the Llama Caravans, actually. Shadow Fags micro a little bit to try and pull the Stymphalian bird in. That's kind of funny to see that. I'm fairly sure that can't hit the, the guy but is what it is as chemo is pulling back shadow facts moving in with his arcus and for more dryads coming out here for for chemo as he's trying to get as much stuff out as he possibly can he is still training llama caravans as if he is uh, as if he is at land, as if he is Ra here, this can be a little bit of a mistake in all honesty, because then you have no population to build anything, you just come sitting at infinite resources in a way. If he's got more than 30 ca llama caravans here right now, he should stop making them. Looks like he's getting pretty close to that number. 26 or so. Whereas Shadowfax, on the other hand, he doesn't need to build anymore. Once he's got like 20, Having 20 is like having 22, so he probably only needs about that many, and he's just happily doing everything. It's because you get the extra 20% bonus from uh, from the channels. It's effectively a 20% bonus to your llama caravans, which means every single time, uh, every single car, except the time you get is it five, five llama caravans, you get an extra effective llama caravan. So at 20, you're at 24. Is that right? Something like that. The Kemo is still trying to trying to hold here, trying to push through. See some more palace coming up, but right now Shadowfax doesn't really have any pushing power here with these units. He does have a a, a possibility of coming in with like Hero Citizen or something and throwing down some buildings on this position, which would be really really strong. He's got a lot of resources in the bank and one thing you can definitely do here is make these into hero citizen as you start getting more and more upgrades up you see the uh the tower kind of not kind of produced it just yet but shadow fax is going to start but that tower uh that tower push happening fairly shortly here one thing that is a little bit important here is to start your tower push a little bit further back would make the most sense here but that's not happening as chemo has got a lot of resources now in the bank. He's going to be getting his upgrades, I'm sure. Already has himself bronze shield. You can see the citizens getting pushed back. Watchtowers has come through. Heroes uh, arc is getting created to try and take down these dryads a little bit faster. Watchtowers now up in the front. So we'll see what. Uh, we'll see if uh, Shadowfax can continue this building spam happening, but. Looks like he's preoccupied somewhere else because he's not spamming these towers out at all. So this game continues along. Got Dryad coming forward for Shadowfax. I'm not sure what else. This is just the. Uh, this is just one of those. Uh, one of those games, I guess. Big spam war. No effort anywhere else. We see the wall up over here for Chemo. 
And Zakimo's like, yeah, if I just put the wall up here, there's no way for Shadow Faction to sneak through. Shadow Fax is just going to continue to put, in, put walls up here. Shockwave happening for the Kima. I mean, it's probably you don't get a lot of value from that. But right now, Kima is just a uh, full population with like 10 units because he has such a crazy trade route. And he's still building Lama Karate. I mean, this is part of this is part of AOM theory in a way. The idea is that you keep building you keep building trade or you keep building villages and make until you have all of your armory upgrades and then once you have them all then you can start thinking about deleting some units to, to keep going uh, as artifacts pushing in with Cairo Ballister here is a little bit weird to see does he have any upgrades on these they've got engineers well, you can get this upgrade here heavy Cairo Ballister and champion Cairo Ballister but he's not he's not getting that just yet and the other thing that it's a slight weakness for the Karabalos and why we don't see this unit built very often in the late game is that it doesn't get axe, it doesn't get buffed by the armory at all. So sitting here at 50% pierce armor, which is a lot more than a champion arc is, but it doesn't get doesn't get any extra damage from the weapons you've you've built or anything like that. It just sits here at this level of usefulness. As more towers coming up, the shout effects trying to push him, we've seen other pallets coming down over here uh, I've said it I've said it before but when Gaia players get to the late game and uh, just Atlantean players get to the late game it's really important to heroize your citizen uh, because it makes these buildings go up much much faster this game has now got tons of food in the bank tons of gold needs to get a little bit more wood income he does have every single one of his upgrades here more fire siphon coming through yeah, you do have to have some sort of an answer to enemy fire siphon so you can use your fire siphon to kill opponents fire siphon works as we see a palace falling here as uh shadowfax is continuing this push into chemo's base you see another fire siphon falling now, i don't know exactly what chemo can really do here as i mean he's, he's got this option to push through here this is this is what he can do he can sneak up a palace over here because look at this shadow facts he doesn't see this location so he can definitely sneak a palace up <coughs> here go for this town center get some sort of a raiding party over there if he gets set up he does have these guard towers down shadow facts he doesn't have guard towers just yet we are seeing some more uh llama caravans coming down but you know how i was saying that Shadowfax has got an advantage here because of the uh, the coinage and the channels as Chemo is going to be beginning researching Secrets of the Titans. Well, in actual fact, he throws that by not having the market on the corner because you can see that these Llama Caravans are getting 114 gold. Shadowfax is only getting 89 gold. So a big advantage there. And Chemo is able to afford a Titan Age right now with all of his craziness right now from all of those markets we see the stimphalion bird flying around checking what's happening but chemo is going to get his titan out and that's going to be a little bit of a difficult one for shadowfax to deal with as he does not have the resources right now to get himself his own titan age and this could be the big difference as it kind of looked like chemo wasn't holding here but if he's getting a titan out all he has to do is hold the the town center and hold the uh the palace that are here a little bit longer and he should be okay it's more fire siphon rolling in onto this position we asked to see those arcs coming through and i think that shadowfax is uh, he's not exactly building units off of auto queue but once you get to the late game it does become pretty important to be very specific about what units you're building auto queue can kind of screw that up for you in a big way if you're not quite used to how to play it so Shadowfax's not really able to make a big push in just yet. There's Kimo just about to hit the Titan Age. He's got lots of food in the bank, so he can take food villages off and be fairly happy about, about that one. Chucking a Titan Gate down in his base would be uh, making the most sense here. Shadowfax just not able to push in. Uh, I'd be surprised if he holds on to this, to be honest, because Shadowfax hasn't even thought about a Titan. And in all honesty, like this is not this is not Greek, so Titan's pretty difficult to stop for Atlantean. 
see some more guard towers going down over here. And Shadowfax's slow pushes uh pretty uh, pretty obnoxious here as we do see a, a guard tower going down. The palace goes down as well here. And there's that Titan Gate for Chemo. Taking his time on it, just making sure he's got enough food to get this one up. Uh, there's not any easy way for Shadowfax to get around the back here, but he is going to be targeting down this town center right now. And this is looking scary for, for Chemo. It's looking scary for Chemo because he just doesn't have the units to fight back here. Uh, so all these buildings going down, the town center will go down as well. Kimber's got heaps of resources in the bank. Does he have full upgrades on his on his archers? Not quite, not just yet. Uh, Shadow Fax as well doesn't have all of his upgrades. And is Fax trying to get to uh, the Titan Age himself? No, he's just going to be spamming units and saying, yeah, I'll just deal with the Titan when it comes, is seemingly Shadow Fax's plan here as another palace coming up. And Kimo's just doing his best... Uh, best job trying to defend here. There's, oh dearie me. Oh dearie me. Chemo's trade route gets stunted here. And he still hasn't noticed. He's got 44 idle llama caravans. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an absolute nightmare for Chemo. He was in a really, really good position resource-wise, and now he's got none. And it takes a while for these llama caravans to get to work here, as Chemo, uh, I don't feel like 45 llama caravans idly has to actually hit this twice. So the quickest way to start this up is to just click this, hold shift, and click onto this town center. But there were a whole bunch of uh, llama caravans here which have got themselves um, which have got themselves, what do you call it? Uh, got themselves gold in their pouch. So they would have been faster to be sent up to the top gold mine. But now Chemo is seemingly getting pushed back here. He's got no real easy defense against what's coming for him as the destroyer is coming in onto this town center. Titan's at 55% though. So even after that mistake there from Chemo as his trade route gets uh, kind of butchered by the game in a, in a way, uh, he's going to have his Titan now. So Chemo, uh, so Shadowfax can get his own Titan here, but the question is, is it better to save that favor for hero units? Uh, or is it going to be better to get the Titan out and try to defend and force the Titan to waste a whole bunch of HP trying to get to it? Those are the big questions that Shadowfax has to answer here, and he's deciding to not go for the Titan. Instead, he's getting a, oh, he's getting himself mythic, mythic Rejuvenation here, and he might be thinking about the Titan Age. So that means no heroes. I'm not sure what's happening. Titan is up to 77 HP as Shadowfax manages to kill off the Town Center, moving slowly forward. We see this Town Center going up, and it probably will be up before the Chemo Titan comes in. See these units getting taken out nicely. Shadowfax moving in to grab the town center for himself. Still no hero citizen, which is absolutely killing me. But what can you do? So we will be seeing the palace shooting these villagers back. Another palace getting dropped here for Shadowfax. It's just like, yep, just keep spamming the units out. Keep spamming the buildings here. And living the dream, we will see the uh, the raids now coming in onto the uh, the line of llama caravans for Chemo. As Chemo does get out his Titan Gate here uh, in a big way. So he's got a huge Titan. He's down to, he's down at Town Center. Shadowfax is in a fantastic position here. The Titan's going to be able to get a lot of value for Chemo, but will Shadowfax be able to defend against it is the big question. We're starting to see a huge amount of walls getting thrown down for Shadowfax. The Town Center is maybe not going to quite get up, so we're not going to be able to see 180 population coming through for Shadowfax. But what Shadowfax can do is make Fnatic, Heroize Fnatic, and then target down this Titan. You can also utilize the Stymphalion Bird uh, to kind of chase down this Titan as well, as that seems to be what he's choosing to do. He's going mass Stymphalion Bird instead of heroes. So a Titan comes in, kills off that settlement. Going to be moving forward as we're starting to see uh, the Titan taking a significant amount of damage every time these uh, Stymphalion Birds uh, attack the Titan. There's a three damage at the very least. Some more palace getting taken out. Take a look at Chemo's resources. Plenty of gold in the bank, not a lot of wood. 
Not a lot of gold. Uh, he's got decent food here, so he could buy wood if he so chooses. It's not going to be costing very much at all. But Shadowfax uh, 2 has got a lot of resources in the bank as this Titan is going down very, very slowly here. Uh, but Shadowfax is just going to ignore this. He, he's got population up the wazoo, so he can move in, try and take the town centers down uh, as the enemy Titan is kind of searching through here, trying to get in with some hero uh, fanatics getting created. As the Titan just runs straight past these watchtowers, I'm surprised. Shadowfax doesn't get himself guard towers. Guard towers is one of the uh, craziest upgrades you can get for a, for a unit. It gets a huge bonus to your towers. It's really important to be thinking about that as we do see this Titan wandering forward. Going to be looking to kill off the main town center here as Shadowfax is trying to push into Kimo's main base. As the palace are kind of everywhere here. Town center trying to come up. The uh, palace are taken out. So a watchtower coming down. As Bridge Trees producing those, uh, those dryads still continuously on this position here to help defend. Still disappointed that we haven't seen any hero units here as Kimo's Titan comes in starting to bash down Shadowfax's town center here. And that's the three Stymphalian birds, the three fanatic heroes doing a really good amount of damage here if I'm completely honest. Uh, it's kind of akin to like the, like kind of even like the Polyphemus or Bellerophon Heliopolis chasing around the Titan at this point. So Shadowfax doing a good job here of getting that Titan down. Does, does Kimo have himself uh, Mythic Rejuvenation. Looks like he's forgotten that technology here. It's a big ticket uh, technology for the Titan to help have him, well, regenerate HP. Now Kimbo's moving into the main base here, but as long as Shadowfax can get himself back up to like two town centers, three town centers, continuously be rebuilding his town centers here, which he's got plenty of resources to do. So it's just a matter of time for that Titan to uh, be taken out, but Kimo is nice and defensive, uh, nice and set up here defensively with ridiculous amount of gold income, to be honest. We see the uh, town center getting taken out. The village is repairing it back up. They're not going to be fast enough to repair it, but they will, uh, they will allow this Titan or have this Titan get a lot more damage onto it as we are seeing the Lama Caravans getting in here trying to get as much gold as they possibly can before the Town Center does inevitably go down to Shadow Fox dropping Shadow Fax dropping down to two Town Centers and rebuilding this one and he's up on the top location here again getting this back up he's got the four Town Centers set up for uh, chucking down Palace Towers and the works over here we we'll see some more Towers coming up on this location here as a stray citizen in the corner does get pop picked off here and now Kimo's trade route is down to none at this point might throw a market up over here and start the trade route to his hometown center or something like that as a titan going to be returning back home here 2400 hp remaining really not a lot for Kimo's titan here as Shadowfax is uh solidifying this position with just a crazy amount of, uh, of towers here in a, in a really big way as more Fnatic gonna be coming in here to try and take down this Titan. Wouldn't mind seeing an attempt at pa actually path blocking the Titan with some bigger buildings or just some speedier units. The Titan is relatively, I wouldn't say he's quick, but he's, he's moving in here and we'll get onto this town center nonetheless. But now Shadowfax gets himself a, uh, a third town center back. So up to four, ta four town centers. Uh, and just in a fantastic position really as the town center will indeed get uh, sniped down, but now the Titan is getting awfully close to falling. The Titan can turn around and actually pick off these units relatively quick here. Uh, he starts using his, his big stampy ability. There he goes. That'll do some big damage to the non-hero units that are around this one as the Titan will be falling here, but we'll see if Kimo's going to be able to get his town center back or not. The other option here could be a wonder in a big way, just buy food, buy wood, build wonder. See if he's gonna think about doing that as an option here. The chemo right now has lost a mana, he's down to 120 uh, population. And I'm not sure, I mean, he's got a ton of powers here, making fire siphon and trying to push back. Uh, Shadowfax here is at 152 of 160 population. Those uh, trade caravans working overtime here to try and get that gold uh, to keep producing these units here. 
And, Ch and Kimo's got the gold advantage right now, so we'll see how he's going to make this work as the palace does come up here. You see the fire siphon getting dealt with nicely as these uh, as kind of getting dealt with, but we just have a whole handful of Stymphalion Burns that are a little bit difficult to deal with for Kimo right now, as he does make a hero Arcus over on this location to deal with the Stymphalion Burns. The Shadowfax isn't going to allow Kimo back onto this position anytime soon. The Gaia Lush is very easy to actually create here. If he gets control of one of the Hesperus trees, for example, that spreads Gaia Lush. He builds a building, that spreads Gaia Lush. So it can be tough for Kimo to rebuild this town center for sure. Uh, but I mean, Kimo's got nearly infinite gold remaining here, so he probably can delete all of these trade caravans and try and push himself up to an artificial 160 population to push back. Now we see the uh, palace getting torn down over here as well for uh, for Kimo as he's trying to break through here with the with just having less population. He's actually managing to make it work pretty well and I think that a big reason for that is because Kimo's not really building Arcus anymore and he's really showing the weakness of archers at dealing with buildings here by just having less population and able to push back with what he's got. Uh, Shadowfox now has got himself a decent amount of gold so he can start thinking about buying food if he needs to because he's currently a little bit short on resources. And Kimo uh, somehow, some way is making a, a pretty strong pushback here. He does still have to break down these towers uh, in order to get his town center back. And then he's got a whole nother mission ahead of him. Uh, he might be able to find a way forward here as he's throwing up more towers on the back here, preventing Shadowfax from, from taking this win. Kimo is a, uh, a never give up, never surrender type RTS player. Uh, always after the uh, running the marathon, especially in these tournaments, he plays for a long time. He's a uh, it is what it is, anyways. Destroyer getting taken out here as the fire siphons do fall, and Shadowfax is now back up to pop. King was struggling a little bit with his own population here. And Shadowfax wants actually Shadowfax isn't up to pop. He's at 140 population only. Shadowfax is struggling here. The so Kimo is really kind of close in a big way as these units are trying to push in. But Shadowfax has got a good good control on this location, and we are seeing some random buildings getting thrown up in the corner here for Shadowfax. Love that spreading that guy lush all over the map. Uh, Kimo, 114 of 140 population. What is happening here? He's trying to build out of his three palaces only. Four palaces here, throwing up a fifth palace, trying to get all of those strong units. He is making Arcus, but mostly fanatics here. As now Shadowfax is fairly well positioned. The more towers coming up. I'm still surprised to see uh, Shadowfax going with, with watchtowers here. He doesn't have guard towers. If you take a look at the difference in stats, 13.6, uh, 1,015 HP, 715 HP, 10.4 damage. So a significant difference there in terms of survivability and damage. But Shadowfax slow pushing still with these towers. And really, what can Kimo do here? And he's trying, I mean, you can kind of artificially break the population limit by making towers here. See one tower going down here as Shadowfax is going to be taking out some fanatics and the and the work. A dryad, it's just not. This just Kimo's army is just not able to hold really. Uh, and Sh Shadowfax is going mass Arcus is the thing that is killing me here because I know that this is just like auto queue brain kind of just Shadowfax is just like doesn't have to really think here to spam Arcus into this into this location but if he if he makes something different like makes fanatics or something mass fanatics it's a much easier time but he just have the food i would guess and one thing that shadowfax has done is trimmed his village account his civilian count down to what is that uh, uh 13 civilian units he's got a, yeah 13 civilian units total here 
So he really, oh no, he's got two on the front as well. So he's really just mass units at this point. But now Kimo is looking like he's managing a uh, somewhat of a push back here. So you do have to remember that Kimo's basically had full, uh, not necessarily, he didn't necessarily have infinite economy, but he had decent economy. But now it seems like he's running out as the trade route has restarted. I mean, do we see the uh, trade route getting trimmed down? There's still 30 llama caravans here. I, mean, I do think a lot were picked off. Oh, and in this moment, Kimo does decide to throw in the towel. The Gaia of Shadowfax, pretty resilient here. He did take a very big advantage of this map. Not a lot of room to move around here. Not a lot of places to attack, given the... Uh, the big cliffs over both sides here. Uh, but Shadowfax holds against the Titan. 43 minutes and 55 seconds and a best of five. It's going to be a long series if every game goes this long. But Shadowfax with a with the first win. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how it uh, how it goes. As, uh, I mean, who knows how what's going to happen here if these guys finish some games quickly, pick some weird gods, we'll see. Uh, Shadowfax not going to have access to Gaia in the next game. <sighs> Exciting times to be had. If you guys enjoyed this game, please consider hitting the follow on the Twitch. If you're on the YouTubes, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next game.